Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for this uh, overview and demo of the new uh, membership system. I am recording tonight's uh, meeting. So uh, if there are, if anyone wants to uh, review things that we go over, uh, we'll, event we'll be posting that, uh, we'll be posting this recording up on uh, the CBTF YouTube channel. And so you'll be able to play it back from there. For tonight, uh, what we're gonna do is we'll start with a little bit of an overview of the new system so that you'll understand sort of the objectives, the main objectives and what we're trying to accomplish with this. Uh, and then we'll also have time for a demonstration of the system so that you'll see how it works. Uh, throughout, we've got uh, two, two sessions uh, scheduled for tonight and tomorrow. Depending on how things go, we might be able to, we might wrap it all up in one uh, just tonight. Uh, last, we had a two sessions scheduled last week and uh, we managed to cover pretty much everything we needed to in the first night. So we um, didn't have to do the second night and everyone got the night off. So um, let's just get started uh, with, oh, and one more thing then. If you have questions along the way, uh, please try and use the chat window and I'll, um, more importantly, I'll try and look at the chat window to see if there are any mess any uh, questions. And then um, at various points, if, if I've missed a question, then uh, uh, when I call for questions, you can just unmute and chime in if I've overlooked something from the chat window. Okay, so we'll start with a bit of an overview of the, of the system. Uh, we'll start with uh, just talking about the, you know, the, the who, what, when, where, why of it. We'll do a little comparison of the old process uh, to the new, the old system and process to the new. Uh, and then we'll go into a sort of a more detailed uh, process flow of how, of what gets done, uh, by whom, and what information is flowing from person to person to person along the way. We'll have a little bit of a demonstration with some typical, um, what I think are typical use cases. So things like, how do I add a member? How do I renew a member for this year? How do I change their address or phone number in the system? Um, how do I submit it to my province? If I'm a provincial registrar, how do I submit it to the national um, member registrar, uh, Beth, uh, so on. Uh, we have talk, we have, uh, and then we'll talk, as we go through that, we'll also talk about the basic data requirements that the new system has. And um, also to start up this, new system. We did do a data conversion of, of some of the data from the old system to the new. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll wrap up, uh, I'll wrap up the presentation. Hopefully we'll be able to wrap it all up tonight and we'll wrap it up with the next steps, what, what to do next, what you can do, and uh, sort of the general schedule that we've laid out. Okay, so we'll start with the why. Um, essentially, we're doing this because the old system had, had become out of date. The old system hadn't been updated, hadn't been able to update the old system since uh, 2014. And uh, the, the old system itself uh, replaced the old, old paper and fax machine technology. Uh, and that was in the mid nineties. And so we had this, the membership system that we had in place was uh, in operation from the mid nineties until now. Uh, but we haven't been able to have any updates done to it uh, for the past six years. So um, that's why we're where we're at. Uh, we were, with some of the basic uh, things that we wanted to change, that we knew we needed to change from the old system to this one, is we wanted to get CBTF uh, and the provinces on a path so that there was a more direct, um, more direct data entry and more direct data access. So that we were more direct data entry, meaning that the data of the system, the membership data gets entered uh, closer to by the clubs, so more by the people who are actually working with the members, uh, and also then more direct data access so that this membership data can be integrated with our um, competition system. And so things like member numbers, dates of birth, um, athlete levels in events, uh, all of that stuff will be able to, will be put, can be pulled uh, directly from the new membership system into the competition system. Uh, and so that was, that's the last one to create an, a situation where we're, um, the membership data is more integrated with CBTF's other core functions. Okay. 
So who gets involved in the, with this new system? Um, we've got club registrars, provincial registrars, and the national registrar. Those are sort of the main key players in the new system. Club registrars, their role is to add and update member information for each season and to prepare the batches that are electronically submitted to their provincial registrar uh, for approval. Provincial registrars will receive and approve those batches from the clubs. They'll prepare batches for their province to be electronically submitted to the national registrar. And then the other thing the provincial registrars do, which isn't on this list, but the other thing that the provincial registrars do is they look after the member information for all of the unaffiliated members in their province. So we have club registrars looking after the clubs and then the provincial registrar looks after the membership information for the unaffiliated members. Um, and then the national registrar, their role is to simply receive and approve the batches uh, from the provinces. Others that will eventually be using the system would be uh, competition directors to do the, to, because of that integration with the competition system. Uh, technical members, and this is, a, this is also something that we'll be doing in the future, but technical members will be able to access their technical uh, information directly. So they'll be able to update their continuing professional and education development logs directly. They'll be able to um, record any technical certifications, any technical training that they've, uh, any classes they've completed and so on. They'll be able to update that information directly as will course conductors if it was an in-person class. The one thing that I guess is worth mentioning is that regular members, so the, the actual members who are being registered, this system is not meant for them. So we've got no immediate plans to have a self-registration function or any self-updating function other than say technical members. Uh, so it's not, it is not meant for the person off, you know, Susie Q off the street who's uh, signing up for a particular club in her province and then she, she goes to this system to register. Uh, she'll still go through the club process and uh, register through her club. The club registrar will uh, receive the information and get it into the system. Uh, okay, so what is the system? So the membership system is, it's a collection of both manual processes uh, and system functions all working hand in hand. So it's a replacement for the current um, centrally managed CBTF membership system. Um, it changes things in that in the current system, membership information is flowing basically by paper until it gets to the national registrar and that's where things get entered into the system. So this turns that around. Uh, the membership information is received at the club level, entered into the system at the club level, and then from then on, all of the information flow is just electronic, it's not paper. So we're replacing the whole uh, paper and mail-based mechanism to get information from the clubs to the provincial body and to the national body. So what it isn't is it's not a form capture system. So if you have um, paper forms, well, there will be some paper forms still, so, but what it isn't is it's not, we're not just taking those paper forms uh, and storing them electronically in the system. Uh, we're not uh, integrating at this point, at least, we're not integrating with any front end online form systems that uh, a club might choose to use, say something like JotForm. Uh, it's not a payment collection system. So even, so memberships have uh, fees attached to them, but this system isn't the way you actually make those payments. So the system knows how much the membership fees are and it knows how much, for example, a club should be submitting to their province and it knows how much the province should be submitting to the to CBTF for their memberships. This isn't the system that you use to do those payments. Uh, this, this, this system will tell you what the payments should be, but then you'd still do payments whatever way you normally do them, whether it's uh, writing a check, e-transfers, and so on. Whatever arrangements have exist in each of the provinces with the clubs and the province and of course with CBTF. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not a direct by member uh, registration system. So when the new system, uh, it's ready to go now in uh, for these demos and in a, in a test phase. Um, but the new system will officially be launching in September. 
uh, after our fall conference. So the 2019-2020 membership data is being, has been migrated into the new system and we put it there as a starting point. Data for the 2020, for the upcoming season, for the 20 and 21 season, that, all, that will all be entered using the new system and the new processes. At this point, we're not making any changes to the normal deadlines. So, um, you know, the deadline for information to be submitted uh, to the national body, that still exists and it would still be up to provinces to decide their own internal deadlines for when a province wants, all, wants their clubs to have all of their membership information um, submitted and completed. And that, can, those, that date, that can vary from province to province. The CBTF date, that stays the same as it has in the past. I know Beth has been, and so club and provincial registrars, they'll all need IDs on the system. Beth has created, has been creating a bunch, um, at least for the ones that she's aware of. I know she put out a call for people that are club registrars or provincial registrars. Um, if you haven't received an ID yet, uh, you can contact Beth and um, she'll make sure you have one. For, uh, for now, what we're doing is we're, the user ID that will be your access point to the system is your email, is the email address that you use as a registrar. And so that's what Beth has been using to create the accounts. Okay, so the where question here with the new system. Um, so as I said earlier, there's both online and paper components uh, to the membership process. The online components, these are all web-based. So yes, they all, they all require a computer. They all require, and that all needs a web browser. Beyond that, the requirements are pretty basic though, in terms of it doesn't need to be a super modern computer. It doesn't need to be a super modern browser, um, but it definitely needs to be a computer or a laptop. Um, smartphones, there's just no, there's just the screens, there's too much information on the screens. There's no way you'd be able to use a smartphone for the application. You might be able to use a tablet, um, but I would say you shouldn't because <laughs> it'll just be hard to do all the typing and all that kind of work. So best to have an actual computer with um, a relatively modern uh, web browser. And the paper components, so the paper components um, are, are, are flexible. CBTF has some very basic core data requirements uh, that it needs in order to have a member. And at the very minimum, all CBTF really requires in order to have a member is a name and an email address. If the member is an athlete, then there's additional information that we need, uh, date of birth, uh, gender, and citizenship. Uh, and then we can also, there's other information we can collect, but in terms of the ac absolute bare minimum, it's name and email, and then the uh, athlete information if it's an athlete type membership. But one of the things that I think is an improvement over, over what we've done in the past is because clubs are the ones who are collecting the data, and entering the data into the system. This actually gives the clubs now the opportunity to create and brand and customize the registration forms that they use for their own needs. So some clubs I know in the country have uh, programs, you know, 10 week programs, eight, 10, 12 week programs. Um, and so now, and they've always had to just do their own way of registering those, collect the information on them, and then pass and, and then fill out the CBTF membership forms and pass those up the chain. This way, um, you can, a club can create its form, structure the way with the, with the uh, program information or fee structure that a club has that's customized for that club. And they're the, because the club is the one that's entering the data into the system, so long as all of the information meets the basic data CBTF requirements, name and email, the waiver, the media release, that stuff, um, then everything, and then we're basically all good to go because CBTF cares the most about what actually gets into the system. Um, so once the data is in there, it moves electronically from uh, the province to the national body for approval. The, uh, the paper that has the waiver, the media release, that does need to be retained uh, 
uh, strictly for legal purposes, just in case there's ever an issue with a person's membership and we need to show that yes, they had indeed uh, acknowledged the waiver, they had indeed signed the media release and so on. So that paper does need to be retained. Uh, this will be a topic at the fall conference in terms of how the data retention, how that paper retention is done. But going into the fall conference, the proposal that, we're, that we have is that the paper be retained provincially uh, and then we'll be finding out sort of for how long. That's more of a legal and insurance question, how long we have to keep this stuff on hand. One of the things that I think is worth noting is electronic copies of the paper, so like a scanned image of the paper, that's totally acceptable. Uh, it does need to be a proper and a good scanned image. So, you know, a photo of the sheet taken with your iPhone, uh, that's not good enough. It really does need to be a proper scanned uh, copy. So it doesn't necessarily have to be boxes and boxes of paper in someone's garage. It can be, you know, folders and folders on some computer somewhere. Okay, had a question here. If a family doesn't have an email address, would you just want to use the club email? So yeah, the, so two things. Um, in the old system, for whatever reason, email addresses had to be unique. So, you know, when a family registered, if, if it was mom and dad and two kids, the old system needed different email addresses for each. So that's, a, that's definitely a change here. We don't require the email addresses to be unique anymore. So there, there, you could use the club email, yes. I mean, you need to use something. Uh, the, the reason for the email is so that there's a way to contact a person if, if CVTF actually ever does need to contact them. And so if it's the club email, I mean, if club email is all you can do, that's all you can do. Um, but you can certainly, in the case of a family where kids don't have emails, you can certainly use the one email for everyone in the family. Okay, so then um, this sort of brings us to a bit of a comparison of the old to the new. Uh, in the old system for membership forms, those were completely CBTF designed. We had, uh, I think a province had their own, usually each province did their own new member application form. And, but the renewal forms that, those were the PDFs that would be generated and came out in July or August of the year. And those were all standard CBTF format uh, for everyone in the country. One of the things that the old system didn't have was the old system did not know about provincial membership fees. And so that's one of the reasons why in the old system, the renewal forms didn't say anything about membership fees. The new system, because clubs are doing the data entry, the new system now does have to know about uh, provincial membership fees. And so that can now be included on, um, on the forms, uh, membership forms. So the new ones are, are uh, club designed and we've talked about the data retention requirement for the forms. Uh, membership fees under the old system, those fee calculations were all manually prepared, manually verified, again, because the system, the system didn't know what the fees were and you know, the system that you were using was, was pen and paper to uh, fill out the membership stuff. In the new case, the national and provincial membership fees are built in. So that now means that when a club is submitting a batch to their province, the system can calculate what the provincial fees are for all the people that were in that batch. And then when a province is submitting a batch to the national federation, the system knows what the CBTF portion of the fees are. And so when, prepare, when it prepares the batch, the system can, act, can tell you what the uh, fees that, will, that are due to CBTF, what those fees are supposed to be. Membership numbers under the old system, membership numbers were assigned manually. Different provinces did different things. In some cases, um, the a provincial registrar would maintain a list of membership numbers that were available uh, and a, those would get assigned when uh, membership applications came in. Uh, sometimes it didn't happen until things went further along in the process. In the new system, uh, membership numbers are automatically assigned when the member is added. So right when the club uh, registrar is adding the new member, they'll get their uh, membership number uh, assigned right away. So we had a question here um, 
from Tanya, does the system automatically calculate provincial board members reduced fees? No. So that's one thing it does not do. Um, and so that, and that's one of the reasons why the system doesn't automatically uh, handle money transfers, because there may very well be reasons why the fee, the, the, the base fees, I'll call them, uh, as calculated, um, is not actually what ultimately would be paid. And so CBTF, for example, CBTF waives the CBTF portion of a membership fee for anyone who's on the CBTF board, or I think the technical committee as well. Some provinces do a similar thing within their province for people who are on provincial boards. Again, that varies from province to province. System doesn't know about either of that, any of that. So those would be individual adjustments that would have to be made um, along the way. And it's an adjustment that is made to the payment, doesn't change uh, how you process the renewal or the batches. And then Beth, Beth was just pointing out with respect to the membership forms, some provinces may, I've been describing a situation where it's possible now for clubs to have their own um, membership forms for both renewal and new member. It all has to work within your province. So in some cases, some provinces do uh, follow and do have a standard uh, form for renewal or for new members. And so clubs should certainly be checking uh, within their province uh, before going off and designing your own form. The system allows for it. It doesn't mean your province wants it to happen that way. Uh, data entry, comparing data entry in the old versus the new. Uh, in the old system, the data entry was done completely by the CBTF data entry coordinator, which meant none of the data entry in the system happened until the process had gotten, until the forms, the physical forms in that case, actually got to Beth and had been processed by CBTF, which meant there's really no data entry happening until December, January. So, and that, and I'm, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the time that it would take in between, you know, I, I filled up my membership form and sent it into my province in September. Why is it in January? I don't, I can't get a list. So this changes that. This changes it so that now the club registrar is doing all the data entry. So it's done right away up front. Um, and there, I'll show in the, when we get to the demo, I'll show you a couple spots where club registrars or provincial registrars can do data exports of all the members that are in their list. And that'll export data into an Excel file. Uh, and then of course, once it's in an Excel file, then you can start doing a whole bunch of things in terms of formatting stuff up and making lists and so on. Uh, we had a question here that if a former athlete was returning from, in this example, two years ago, uh, do they get a new membership number they can access or can they access and use their old? So they'll get a new one. Uh, we've only converted data from the current season. And so they'll just get a new number when they sign up. Uh, batches. So batches are, are fairly different in the, old, in the old system versus the new. In the old world, batches were the membership forms were physically collected together. Uh, cover sheets or summary sheets were prepared for those uh, the all of the all of the membership forms physically in the batch they were those summary sheets were manually prepared the membership fees were written down added up and collected in the new system the summary sheets the the concept of a batch still exists and the concept of a summary sheet still exists but it's all system generated and it's really all just there for reference and one of the nice things, I think, hopefully, one of the things that the provincial registrars and the national registrar will think is nice about the new system is that when a bat, when they do receive a batch, it's a very easy process to just to approve it. Uh, and it's also on the other side for a club or for a province to prepare a batch, it's a very easy one click process to just create the batch and submit it. For reporting in the old world, because the database was held centrally by CBTF, all reports, the only reports that existed were the ones that CBTF could produce, the CBTF system could produce. They could only be produced when CBTF was read, when the CBTF data entry coordinator was ready to actually produce them, which meant all of the data entry had to be done 
so it was all done on CBTF schedule. The uh, originally in in the original world they were actually they were actual paper reports, and that was the only um, way for that information to get out. Somewhere in between 1995 and 2014, that got modernized a little bit, uh, and they were in P they were PDFs, but it was still just an image of the paper. In the new system, reports really reports exist as data exports, and so the data from the system can be exported into Excel format. That can be done whenever a club or a province wants to do it for the, for the data they have access to. Uh, and so once it's, and then once it's been exported, uh, you can do whatever you need to do with it in Excel or in Word or, or so on. So basic process flow. The basic flow really doesn't change that much. We've got information being collected by the club registrar, sent to the province, sent to the national registrar. Uh, it's what changes is what's happening at each spot. So the club registrar, they're receiving the forms from the members, the renewal and the, and the new membership applications. They're now entering the data from that form into the system. They're preparing a batch or batches to go to the province and they'll send their payment to the province. When the provincial registrar sees that a batch has arrived, they'll do the job of verifying that the payment received matches what was in the batch or matches what was supposed to be in the batch. If it doesn't match, say for example, because one of the members from that club happens to be on the CBTF board and so they didn't have to pay uh, the CBTF portion of a membership fee, that would be, a, that would be a, something that the provincial registrar would look. So I was supposed to get $500, I only got 478, why? Oh, I see, it's because Fred is in the list and he's on the board. So. $22 off or whatever it is. So that's the provincial registrar's job. They'll verify the payment uh, and then they'll approve the batch from the club. And then they'll be preparing their own batches uh, for, the prop, for the provincial data to go to the CBTF. As part of preparing that batch, the system will tell them how much the CBTF fees are and they'll send the payment off or they'll get their treasurer to send the payment uh, off to CBTF. And the national registrar, they'll, they'll receive the batch, verify the payment and approve it. Uh, we had a question here, is there ability to save data, go back in later to finish entering data before submitting the batch for the club? So essentially, yes. Um, however, what I'll say is this, what the, it's not, um, so it's not like a Word document where you can write half of it and wait and go back and save it and then come back and write another bit and go save it and come back and write another bit. It's you're entering each member or each member Piece, each membership piece of information. You can let that stuff sit and accumulate and prepare one big batch at the end of the membership cycle. So sometime in October, and that one batch could have all of your members on it. The other approach that a club might take is um, to actually submit batches every once in a while. So uh, some clubs, for example, might do um, membership drives where they might uh, be doing a membership drive, they might be performing at some mall and taking new members. They might want to process all of those new memberships and submit them in a batch to the province. And there they go, you know, our mem membership drive for week one is done. And if they have another membership drive in two weeks at a different mall, uh, they could then receive all those forms, process them, submit the batch, send off the payment, uh, and, and the second batch is done. So you don't have to do all of your members in one batch. You can actually break it up into uh, several smaller batches. It's whatever, whichever of those approaches uh, sort of works best in terms of the workflow. I think under the old system, the general um, feeling was that dealing with those summary sheets was such a pain in the butt that they almost that people almost always collected everything and just submitted one batch because they really only wanted to have to deal with those summary sheets once. Uh, under the new system, because the summary sheets are essentially all automated and the system's doing all the math for you anyway, it's actually pretty easy to say, I've gone through half of my group and I might as well just submit this right now, get it out of my hair. Okay, so before we go into um, so, some demonstrations, uh, any other questions just about all of this background stuff?
Hearing none, I will flip things over. So um, where I'm going to start is with setting up a new, setting up your membership or your account on the new system. And I think that's here. Yep. Okay. Just give me a sec. I got to move things around on my screen here. Okay, so uh, basic, basic starting point for the membership system is the URL. It's just, it, it's uh, what you really actually have to type in is just membership.cbtf.ca. Um, if you do that, it'll take you to the right place. It adds a, a number at the back. That's, you don't need to remember that part. Um, so you come to here. Now, if you know your um, membership ID, for example, if you know your account, sorry, not your membership ID, if you know your account name, you'd go and click login and you'd type in your username. Now, as Beth is starting to set them up, she's setting people up uh, with their username as their email address. So let's say for the sake of the argument that she sets you up and um, you've, you, it's been a while since you got the you know, password reset email from her or the activation email from her and you need to come in. So you would just start, the easy thing to do is to just come in here with what you know is your username, which would be your email. Type it in as your username. You've forgotten your password, so just click on the forgot my password button and the system will send you an email so that you can reset your password. And then uh, once that email shows up, uh, then which I don't know why it's taking too long. Once that email shows up, you'll get, uh, there's a link in the email that you can use um, to uh, click in on. So let me just check my email. I'll open this up and I'll show you. No, oh, that's a bad one. Probably haven't set up that other one. There, there we go. Okay, so you get an email that looks like this. Oh, you guys couldn't see that. Sorry, I had done the share wrong. Okay, so that's similar. Um, this was a t this is from the test system, but you'll basically get an email from the uh, membership system saying uh, you've got a reset link. So you'll just click on that. Uh, the system will take you to the uh, reset password page and uh, off you go. So let me show you that. There it is. I've got too many windows open. Okay, so there's the password reset page. So I clicked on that on the link from my email. Uh, it came here. It tells me that I've got a I've got a one time uh, reset link that expires soon in four hours. Uh, and I just type in my new password, confirm it, click OK. It changes my password, and it logs me in. All right, and it takes me to the system. It doesn't log me in. So now I'll go do that. So I will log in as admin with the password I just typed in. Good. Okay. So the landing page or the, the first page for the system is, just, is this basic one. Um, has 
some menu items or buttons across the top. It has a spot on the page for news items. So this, this is something that it gives Beth the uh, option or the ability to send out standard messages uh, that are going out to uh, everyone. There are different kinds of uh, messages. So some of them are public, but all, but, and which means you'll be able to see the message even if you aren't logged in. Uh, and some of them are private in that they can only be seen by someone once they have logged in. So this might be stuff where, um, you know what, you might have a general message. Well, this one, for example, we had a general message saying the CBTF membership system is scheduled to go live on September 19th. Uh, and then these two, actually, these two are uh, private, saying when we were actually holding the um, uh, training sessions. But these might be, a, this would be a place for Beth to as post a reminder that, you know, provincial, back, provincial memberships have to be received by such and such a date or things like that. Okay. So I'm going to start with a couple of things. Um, so I've logged in as an admin, which means I have access to a whole bunch of the data. I'm going to log out. Oh, no, actually, I'll, I'll carry on here. I've logged in as an admin. I have access to a whole bunch of the data. One of the things that uh, the system does is it controls the kind, it controls the amount of information that a person has access to and the amount, what they can view and what they can change to be within basically their scope of work. So if you're a club registrar, the data that you can view and change is limited to those members in your club. If you're a provincial registrar, you would be able to look at, look at and change the data for the people in your province, but not in another province. And the national registrar, they're like an admin. They can actually uh, look and see at, um, look and see uh, pretty much everything. And I will show you the difference here. I'm going to go to the test system to show you what I mean. There. Okay, so I'm going to log in as a test. This is going to be a club registrar in Ontario. Really? System. There we go. Okay, so this is an Ontario club person, and as they log in, the scope here, there's only one option in that scope field, uh, and it's, it's the code that I've set up for that club, uh, T Ontario. Um, and the members here that I can see are the ones that are in my club. If I was to be a different club, and I'll log in as... This is a Saskatchewan club. System looks the same. I go to the registration page. The club is different. TSK, that's my test Saskatchewan club. It's the only one that I have access to. So if I click on the little down arrow, there's only the one option there. Um, but there's, it's a very different club. Uh, in terms of the size. They're in, in the club TSK. If we look at their um, addresses, if I look at one of these guys, you'll see that their address is in Saskatchewan. They're with the TSK club and so on. So that's, that's actually an important security feature or data privacy feature so that you can only have access to uh, the information within your scope. If I come out of here and I log back in as my admin person who has a much bigger scope options. If I go to that same page, start out, but I start out looking at the Saskatchewan club because I was in there earlier, 
But this person, this admin person, has access to a whole bunch of other scopes. So they can look at a national scope. So that, that's looking at everyone. So we've got Ontario members, Quebec members, Alberta members. They can, I, they, if I was, say, a, a, the, a, the BC uh, club registrar, the members in here, you'll see the, the membership numbers also are all BC membership numbers. So that's what they're just restricted to that. Saskatchewan, they're, it flips over. They're, they can only see their Saskatchewan members. So that's an important thing. One of the things that, um, one, of the one of the implications of this though, is for a couple of special use cases. One is when a member is changing a club and the other is when a member is changing a province. And so when a member is changing a club, so they're going from club A to club B, the question is who gets to do this? The club A person can't do it because they don't see club B. The club B person can't do it because they don't see club A. So when a person is switching a club, that's a change that can only be done by a provincial registrar or by the national registrar. And so that's, you'll just have to do that by request, send an email to your provincial registrar and say, hey, Suzy Q is moving from um, club A to club B. Can you move her over for me so that, if you're club B, move her over for me so that I can see her data and process her renewal. And I'll show you an example of that. So I will use myself as an example. Um, so if I was to come in here and let's say right now I'm, un, I'm an unaffiliated member, uh, but let's say I was to be moving from being unaffiliated uh, to becoming a member of a club. And let's just, for the sake of the argument, say he becomes a member, Jeff Johnson becomes a member of Tornadoes. Because I have logged in here as, say, as in this case, as the national scope, or if I was the Ontario uh, provincial registrar, I can see Jeff Johnson and I can see all the clubs in my province. If I was, say, the Saskatchewan registrar, I don't see him. I don't see him. But if I'm the Ontario one, there's Jeff. So we'll edit. And we can move him from, say, the unaffiliated uh, members. Actually, I'll move him over the to the test club. And then when we're doing the test work, you'll see that I've moved, I'm in there. Uh, so that's it. You just select that and click OK to save it. Now, similarly, um, it's the same kind of situation if a, province, if a person, if a member is moving from one province to another. Uh, that's something, again, that can't be done by a club person because they don't see data outside their scope. Can't actually be done by a provincial registrar because they too don't see data outside their uh, provincial scope. So that's a change that could only be done uh, by the national registrar. And if we had good old Jeff Johnson there again, um, I'm, I'm in here now with national scope. Now I can pull this up and the national person can change a club, but the national person can also uh, change the province that the person is attached to. I'm gonna leave him in Ontario just for the sake of the demo that's coming along. So that's, those are two, um, I'll say rare-ish, uh, situations, but the way they get handled is is, is at least worth noting. Uh, in essence, when if you're if it's a club switch, it has to be done by the province, and if it's a province switch, it has to be done by uh, the national registrar. Okay. Um, the other thing I think that I'll show right at this point is some is the data exporting, because an easy way or to do the renewals is to export the data um, for the people in your club. It'll be a club. Export the data for the people in your club and take it into Excel and then do a mail merge uh, with Word and generate uh, some renewal forms that way. We've got, uh, Beth and I have prepared some template um, renewal forms, new renewal and add member, new member application forms uh, for clubs or provinces to use. Uh, we'll distribute that stuff um, shortly and I'll um, show some of it here. So first of all, the export 
the data export happens right on this uh, membership list. And so, and it's just, there's an export button down at the bottom. And what it will do is it'll export everyone that's in your list. So if I've searched, if I've done a search in this list and I've already sort of filtered it a bit, um, so in this case, I'm searching for everyone that has J-O-H-N-S in their name. Um, and I do a data export now, it's only gonna export that one record in the list. If I reset this so that it shows everyone and I do the data export, it'll still, it'll just export everyone that's in my list, uh, which in this case is now everyone that I have access to. So if I click export, it does it, uh, and it just uh, created a CSV file, which it downloaded to my computer, which uh, I can pull up for you. If I can find Excel, there we go. This is one I did earlier with the Saskatchewan data. I can, uh, uh, and, and it's just basic old Excel. Uh, it's got all the same information in the export that was in the list on the screen. So it's got their CBTF number, their membership type, uh, their actual, their name, um, put together their first name and their last name, their email address, uh, the current season, the latest season that we have a registration information for, uh, their total membership fee, their C the CBTF portion of their membership fee, and all the other information that we keep. We'll talk about more of that stuff later. Once you've got that in your um, Excel, then we can do a mail merge. If I bring up Word. Okay, so here's a template uh, membership form that we've created. This one, this one was for Ontario because it's got the Ontario fee numbers in. So as a basic template, anyone could use this. You'd need to change the stuff that we've highlighted in yellow. So you might have a, if it's a club form, you'd change the club, you put your club logo and your club name on there. And then you'd have to change the fees over here to be whatever the actual fees are in your province. This is showing you the mail merge field. So this is pulling uh, fields out of that Excel sheet. And um, it's, so it's pulling those fields out and then it's got all the basic, all the standard stuff that CBTF requires in terms of terms and conditions, the waiver. Um, this year we've added, CBTF is adding a COVID-19 uh, waiver uh, statement. And I guess there's a waiver, it's a waiver and the media consent. So those are all the standard things. I've downloaded the file, the, the CSV. So if I do the mail merge, there we go. So this is generated, I don't know, lots of pages, um, but it's filled in, it's filled in the base, it's filled in that information from that, uh, from the system. So their name, their email address, uh, their mailing address, if we had one, their membership number, their telephone number, uh, the current membership that they were holding. If we've got athlete data for them, it lists that. Uh, and then this would be the section that, they, that the person would have to fill out uh, to choose the various membership types that they're registering for. Uh, they could easily just correct any spelling mistakes that might exist. Uh, and then they go down and sign it. And it's one page uh, per renewal. So we've sort of shrunk things down uh, from the old system where on the renewal, it was always two sheets. Uh, so we've shrunk, managed to shrink things down. So it's now, it's down to one sheet. Oh, my screen stayed on the original word file. Oh, I hate Zoom. There it is. There we go, sorry. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> so um, I'll repeat. So <laughs> this is the merge data. So it's flipped over, it's filled in, uh, the name, the email, the mailing address, uh, all of that information that's come out of the Excel file, uh, filled in the um, athlete data for those that we had it, that we had it for. 
Uh, and then, it, as I say, it's got the terms and conditions, the waiver, the COVID-19 waiver, uh, and the media consent wording. Those are all the standard CBTF wordings and a spot for a uh, signature. Uh, and it's one page per uh, renewal now. So the thing, um, I guess the thing, the, the most important thing is these are just templates. So in order to use them for real, make sure you've changed the fees section to show the actual fees for your province or club, I guess, if you have club fees. And if it's a club and whether it's a club or a provincial forum, the other thing obviously changed the, uh, the logo and the name that's up at the top of the form. Okay. Oops, and that, this, and let's go back to the system. There it is. Okay. So we've done an export, showed you the mail merge templates. Um, you, can, you can design your own. I mean, the, there's nothing that says you have to use those. The important thing, of course, though, is that you're using uh, the CBTF, the, the CBTF approved uh, wording for the waiver, you know, the COVID-19 waiver this year and uh, the media release at a minimum. Um, so let's go through and start doing an add a member, renew a member, change some member information. So a little bit just about the application. So we've got some buttons up here in the toolbar, uh, one that takes you to the home screen, lets you log out or log in. I'm logged in, so it now lets me log out. I can change my settings. The only real settings that uh, you have to change at this point is the username associated with your account. So if you didn't want to be using your email address as your username, you could change that here. Uh, we, you can change the email address on your um, user ID, on your account. Uh, if you change email addresses or if you want to receive club e on club email, uh, system email on a different um, email address, you could change that here. Obviously you can uh, change your password, you'd enter it twice and confirm it. And if you are changing your password before you can enter a new one, uh, you have to enter your old one to essentially prove that you really are who you are, who you say you are. So that's on the settings. Membership, um, there's really just two functions, registration and batch processing. And then uh, down the road or down the line, uh, we have functions here, for example, for technical members to be uh, entering their CPED log information. Uh, we'll have information, we'll have stuff in here for judges in particular. As technical members, they can um, look at the CBTF video library and see some sta see the standardized scoring for uh, different events. Uh, we'll have a competition system is in here, so it'll be the same uh, user IDs and accounts. Uh, if you're a club director, for example, uh, you'd be using the same. The one account gets you into all of these systems. There's some admin functions, which is essentially all the setup stuff. Most people won't have access to that. And then there's user setup, which is really just for Beth. So in the membership piece, there's two components, the registration page, which is used to both register new members, register returning members, and it's also the same page that you would use if you needed to update any member information. And then there's the batch processing page. So let's start with registration. We'll come back here um, for my test, test club in Ontario. So you'll see Jeff got moved into this test club. Um, and let's say that's what we needed to do. Jeff, we need to renew Jeff for the upcoming season. So I select him, I click edit, or I can double click on, on his name. And the member details for that member pop up. So we see that he's in, he's in OBTA and he's in the Test Ontario Club. We've got his name. If I needed to change his address, you know, I could do that here. Still in Toronto, Ontario, postal code, his email address and his phone number. This information, well, this information, no, because we've anonymized it, but this information in the product, in the system that's actually on the internet, not my test system, that information did actually come out of the old, what was currently in the CBTF membership system. So as you process renewals, I'll, I'll caution you with a couple things. Um, 
I would, or I would ask that you take, you pay particular attention uh, to the email addresses that are entered in because having done the data conversion and having looked at some of the email addresses that have come over, I know some of them can't be real because they're, they're just, they're not the right, like, you know, it's not, it's not Hotmail or it's not Gmail that it's been typed in wrong. And some of that stuff happens just because um, it was difficult to read the handwriting on the membership form. And so as you do a renewal, I would encourage all, I would encourage you to just verify the information that's here that's in the system is actually correct because this is the perfect time to get it fixed up. One of the reasons why it's valuable for you to get it fixed up is because you now can do these data exports out of the system. So in an ideal world, you'd want the email address to be correct it's because when you do your data export, you want that email address that you might be using to be correct so that your emails don't actually, so the emails actually do get to the person you need them to go to. So we'll carry on. There's nothing else to change about Jeff. Don't need to enter his date of birth or stuff. And to register him for the new season, he's, he was registered for the 2019 season. That was the current, that was the last one. And I'm just going to add him now to the latest season. And that just creates a new row in his registrations table, 2020, 21. His member type is carried forward from the previous year. If you needed to change it, this is when you would do it. You can record whether you've received payment from him, whether he's signed a liability waiver or not, and whether he's signed the media release or not. You'll notice that once you record that he's signed both the liability waiver and the media release, his member status flips over from being initiated to now being complete. Because from a member, from a CBTF membership perspective, that's what we needed. We needed his name, his email address, the liability waiver, and the media release. You might also notice, as I scroll over here, in the provincial and national fees section, the fees from his 2019 season, the provincial fee is zero because the old system didn't know anything about provincial fees. The national fee, the CBTF portion, that was the $22. It knew about that. Now for this year, we know that in Ontario, they, type, they charge $49 for a type D membership. And so the system has calculated that up. If Jeff was going to be both um, a D and let's say a technical member, because I think Ontario charges more for technical memberships, once, oops, I didn't do that, D and T1, then his, provin yeah, his provincial fee changed from the $49, which was the fee for a D, to the $95. Uh, and the rule that's being applied here is that the system charges uh, the fee for the most expensive membership. So the T1 was is $95 in Ontario, and so that's what it's charged. And the national fee also went up from the 22 that it was, which is what went with the D, to the 50 that it would be now with the uh, T1 membership. So we've added him. We've changed his member type and we're done. We can click OK. When we get back to this screen, the latest season column for Jeff has updated. We now see that the latest season that he's registered in is 2020 21, whereas these other guys are still stuck in the 2019 year. So you could do a couple of these. This is the next guy. He was a type E membership. Let's say there's nothing to change there, they're just renewing. I'll click latest season. Yep, there's still an E. Provincial fee is $11. The national fee is $385. And I just click OK. So I'm all done. Um, one of the things that does happen this year, and it's not because of the membership system, but it's because CBTF is changing the technical membership, is the Type C membership that existed for 2019-20 is being replaced by two different type technical memberships, T1 and T2. And so when you're renewing someone who has a C membership, the system doesn't really know that C, what a C should become, whether it should become a T1 or a T2. And so when you renew this person into the current season, it carries forward the C in their previous year's uh, membership types. If at this point you, weren't, you didn't notice and you just clicked OK, the system, oops, 
the system would, and it's kind of, um, it might be tough to see on the screen there, but the system has highlighted this member type in red, and it's given me this little error message, oops, let me hover, that it says one of the member types you entered is not valid, and it's the C, and at which point, as club registrar, I'll say, oh yeah, right, CBTF changed. And so now I'll just go in and I'll get rid of the C, and I'll give them a T1. Oops, no, I didn't. V and T1. And uh, now it'll be okay, because now he's updated uh, the provincial fee and the national fee. And if I click okay, I don't get the error message and it just saves it. And back here, on that example, the membership uh, type has changed from D and C or from C and D to now D and T1, uh, and, they're and they're registered in this season. So just give me a sec here. My screen has gotten out of control again. Okay, so, so far so good, I hope. Now, that's all for renewals. Renewals are pretty straightforward because the system has the old information and all you're really doing on a renewal is saying, add them to this season. If I was doing an ad, it's not that much more complicated. It's the same screen, same page. It just, it comes up blank. And so you now have to start typing some information in. So let's say we were adding Nicole in here. I'm not gonna bother with her um, address, but I'll type in her correct uh, email address, of course. <laughs> and uh, let's say we're adding her here as, oh no, let's, let's add her as an athlete. So that's fine. So we put in a membership type A. I didn't put in athlete information because I'm lazy. So member type A and I click OK. Oops. And the system says, oh, let me see what I did wrong. Okay. It hadn't taken me. So I click OK. And now the system says, hold on a sec. This is one of the athlete membership types. You have to tell us the date of birth. You have to tell us their gender. And you have to tell us their citizenship. So I will. I suppose I could do it close to right. Um, and now when I click OK, it'll save it. And there's Nicole added, into the, added onto the system. So adding, not much more than, um, or, oh, actually the other thing I should show you with Nicole is um, it assigned her her CBTF number right away. So her CBTF number is gonna be on ON50005 with the member type of A attached to it. So adding, again, not that much more to it than um, renewing. We just got a little bit more typing to do. One thing about Mailing addresses that I will say, let's say you started to type their mailing address in. You didn't bother with the city province postal code. You did type in the email address because you remembered we had to do that. Ah, so now the system is a little bit cranky because you've only entered part of an email address. And so it's highlighted those fields and it's given you the warning or the error that says if part of the mailing address is entered, then the complete mailing address must be entered. So we don't, it just, we just don't, there's no point to having a partial mailing address. So um, it's an all or nothing thing, which is essentially the same as we have on the data, on the athlete fields. So if you're gonna, if, if it's an athlete member type, we need date of birth and gender and citizenship. It isn't good enough just to give us the date of birth. We need all three. If they're not an athlete member, you can still enter this information and you'll probably see um, when, you, when you look at your, the converted data, you will probably find members who are now C's or D's that have athlete information attached to them. It's okay for it to be there. Um, you could remove it if you wanted. Uh, it's not wrong to collect that information for non-athlete members, but again, it's an all or nothing proposition. So if it's just it, we need date of birth and gender identity and citizenship all, all together as a clump um, or not at all. And if it's an athlete membership type, which is the A, B, B, R, and G, 
If it's an athlete membership type, we need them all. Okay. Uh, let me finish this guy. I'll do them as a as an E, I guess. Okay. So we've done some renewals, we've done some ads, and now it's time to submit this to the province. So I'll go back to the membership uh, option. This time I'll click batch processing. Initially, as, the, on, as this Test Ontario Club, I haven't submitted any batches yet. So there's nothing in my batch list. If I want to, when, now I want to add the batch. So I'll just click the add button down at the bottom. And the system has automatically, automatically goes out and finds for me all of those people that I have access to who have not yet been submitted on a batch and it puts them on my list for me. So if I've done a batch and 10 people out of my club have already been submitted, they won't show up here again. It'll just be the ones that haven't been submitted yet. And it, it brings them up. I've got, how many have I got in here? Five members. Uh, and it's added up what their provincial fees are. It's added up what the CBTF portion is. So I've now got at least a start. I, I now basically know what I need to send to the province if I'm in this case as the club. Um, if Jeff happened to be a board member, I would know to remove the $50, uh, the CBTF portion from that, uh, yeah, from that provincial fee because it's going to come out of here eventually. So I would not send 262, I'd send 212. But it's showing me who's going to be in the batch. It's showing me the fees, the, fee kept, the fees that went into the calculation, and it shows the total. This looks good to me, so I'm just going to say OK. And that is now a submitted batch. I will now flip over and pretend I am the Ontario, no, I'll do this. I'll be the Alberta Provincial Registrar. They've got no batches. No one in Alberta has done any work yet. But if I'm the Ontario Registrar, there's some batches that have been uh, submitted along the way. Did some already um, earlier today. And then here's the one that we just did now. If I'm the Provincial Registrar, I could go in and I could look at that batch and I could see who's in the batch. I might not need to because, for example, I know that it was submitted by club, by that club, T Test Ontario. It was submitted to me, that's the approver OBTA. I know that I was expecting to receive fees of $262. So I, at this point, I would probably be contacting my treasurer, say, hey, we were supposed to get a check or get a deposit for $262, did we? And my treasurer might say, well, no, we got one for 212 at which point, okay, now I need to go in and look at this batch and say, oh, okay, I see why. Jeff Johnson's on the board, his $50 comes off the top, that explains it. If I'm happy with, if, that, if, I, if that's all I needed to do, I can now approve that batch. One click and I'm done. So now, I'll go back, I'll just, um, I'll be the club. So here I go back, now I'm the club, and I see that my stat, my batch has been approved. And I can go in and look at some of my membership information and I can see that the, at a, in this column, the provincial status, I can see that all of those members have now been approved. Uh, there's other members in my club that, are, that I haven't done the renewals for yet, so they're fine. But these ones, they've been approved. So if I'm the Ontario person now, I'll be the Ontario registrar. I'll do the same. It's time for me to submit a batch to Beth. I'll go to batch processing. I've submitted, I've submitted some in the past. I've received some and submitted some, but I'm going to now add a batch. And there are, what it, again, what the system will do is it will go out and it will find all of those people that have been, that have not yet been submitted to the National Organization for Approval, but that have been approved provincially. So, if there's other clubs out there that are processing their memberships, doing renewals, doing ad members, and they haven't submitted any batches to me or I haven't approved them, I'm not, th those names won't show up in this list to be forwarded on to the national body for approval. These show up in this list because they've already been provincially approved and they haven't yet been submitted up the chain. So here they are, I'll submit those. Oh, I kind of glossed over one thing. Um, again, the system has calculated the fees and the number of members in the batch. Um, and now I'm going to pretend to be Beth. So I've got, I'm, as a provincial person, 
I've submitted a batch from OBTA to the CBTF and the status is submitted. If I come in here as the national person, I will see that OBTA has submitted a batch to me and it's submitted. So I'll take a look at it. Looks good. They only sent me a hundred and whatever, $107 and 70 cents, but that makes sense. Oh no, I guess they would send have sent me what? $79 and 70 cents. But that makes sense because Jeff's on the board, so he doesn't have, they don't have to pay that $50. So I'll go back and I'll approve that batch. Done. And if I go all the way back to being the Test Ontario Club Registrar and look at my membership data, I will now see a couple things. On the national status, you'll see that the national status has changed. Uh, for, it changed for Jeff. He's now approved nationally. But these others are showing as incomplete. And the reason they're showing is incomplete, if you look at their liability waiver and their media release, you'll see that we haven't received those. So, if, so for whatever reason, when the membership form was processed, that wasn't received. Um, and let's say now it has been. So me, the club registrar, I'll come back in here for this person and I'll say, yes, I've received their liability waiver. And yes, I've received their media release. And at that point, their national status now flips over to being approved because they've now met all the requirements to be approved nationally. They've been submitted and approved provincially. They've been submitted and paid for nationally. We've got their liability waiver. We've got their media release. And so now they can be approved nationally as well. And that's gets reflected there. One, uh, one thing I should show, I should talk about a little bit, I guess, is these, um, these are just check boxes, the liability waiver and the media release. The form itself, of course, happened with the new member or with the renewal. So the form does have to exist. It really does have to have a, a, form, a, a signature on it. Um, and, that, and when you've got those, then you can check those off. The payment box is really just there for the club. If the club wants to keep track of whether they've received payment from this member, this is where you could do that. The payment field doesn't mean we've paid their provincial fees or we've paid their national fees. It's really meant to be used at the club level just as a way for a club to manage people that are in the list. That payment field does not factor into whether or not their provincial status can be approved or their national status can move up to approved. It's just there for information. Another field that's like that is this provincial coding field. Couple of the provinces that we have um, do uh, reporting to their provincial sports body. And they do, uh, in the case of like Alberta and Saskatchewan, for example, they do it by uh, the prov their provinces are broken up into different regions and they have to report how many members are in each region. So this is, this is a place where those provincial reporting codes can be recorded and then because they get recorded here, they'll show up in any of those data exports. So it can be, it's a useful, I think it, hopefully it'll, people will see it as a useful tool um, to record that information when the member is being renewed or added. Uh, and because it'll certainly simplify a lot of the reporting that has to be done at the provincial level. And I've missed a question here. So Tanya has pointed out that the provincial registrars don't get copies of batches or fees to know what they're looking for or waiting for. No, you don't. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a situation where the provincial registrar and the provincial treasurer uh, need to work hand in hand. Provincial registrar need, would reach out and say, hey, treasurer, I've received a batch from the tornadoes and it should, and they didn't send me the check. So can you check, or can you check and did they e-transfer you the $72 that they owed us for this batch? And they either did or didn't. And if they don't, they're not that bad. The provincial registrar is not going to be approving that batch. And then same thing happens on the other end. When the provincial registrar is preparing their batch to go to CBTF, 
um, again, they'll, they'll prepare the batch and they'll have to contact their provincial treasurer and say, hey, I'm sending a batch to CBTF. We owe them $522. Can you get that to them? However it is you do, whether it's e-transfer check or whatever. So I think it's not the treasurer who has to be driving that process. It's the, it's the registrars that need to be driving that process. <clears throat> so Lance asked the question, um, it can, is it that only approved members can be batched and submitted? No. So anyone can be batched and submitted, whether they've, whether we've received their liability waiver, whether we've received their media release or not. The system lets you batch and submit anyone who hasn't already been batched or submitted for the current season. Whether or not the batch will be approved, if it's got incomplete, if it's got members with incomplete data, that's first going to be a decision at the province, at the provincial level, and then it will eventually be a decision at the national level. And so in the past, for example, in the old paper form process, um, I think Beth would basically go back to each province and say, hold on a sec, you've sent me a batch, but you know, eight of the forms haven't been signed or there's forms missing for eight of the members. Uh, so I'm not, I can't approve this thing yet. And so all of those checks and balances, those still have to happen. Those still have to exist and they, they all exist outside the system. That's why batch approval isn't automatic. That's why it's not tied to just the transfer of money. It's part and parcel of the whole thing. Um, and then the other question was, can members from the 2019 20 season, so the previous season, on this be left on the spreadsheet or they have to be deleted. So no, they'll be left on. Um, and then the question is how long can they be left on? So that's a good question. And it's luckily enough, not a question we really have to deal with right away because uh, for this system, it's only got two seasons to worry about, last season and this season. By the time we get to next season, so the 21-22 season, um, then, then we will start to worry about, uh, should we be pushing members off the list? Should we be archiving them? Um, should we be filtering them? Uh, and so on. So, and there's, a, there's pros and cons to all of it. Uh, we had the question earlier about, you know, the, the athlete who hasn't been a member for the last couple of years, and then they've returned. Now they want to uh, uh, start doing things again. Um, it is kind of convenient to be able to just pull up their old information, give them their old membership number back, and so on. Um, so those are kind of the, the balances or the, the pros and cons that we'll have to weigh. For right now, because we've only converted last season's data, it, it's, not, it wasn't a, an, it's not an issue that we had to deal with imminently. Next season, maybe, certainly by the season after, we'll want to. Um, they can be left on, but I mean, to deal with your last question, how long can they be left on? As far as the system is concerned, they can be left on forever. Uh, you as club registrars may very well want to filter them out um, because depending on the turnover in your club, uh, this list can start to get a little bit long and more of them can be old rather than current. And so we will be, I will be adding, we will be adding some filter functions up here in this top row uh, so that you can filter for, you know, current season, current and last, and so on, so that your lists are a little bit more relevant to you. Okay. Uh, that's it for the questions I had there. Let me just pull up what I was going to talk about. So member or no, we've talked about it. New member, yes. Updating a member. Oh, we didn't really talk about updating a member. Okay, so updating a member is no more complicated than... Oh, no, we did. We uh, updated, well, updating a member, you just basically go to the member registration page again. Um, so we're going, we're just going to update Jeff's name. I, oops, I kind of did that fast, didn't I? Uh, we'll go to membership, started in membership and registration. So here's my list. I find the member I need to update. And let's say I need to fix his uh, phone number. I just change it, fix it, correct it, 
and click OK. And it's been done. Just pull them back. There's this phone number, 555-1212. Okay, member renewal, new member, update member, create batch, approve batch, switching clubs and provinces, reports and export. So that's all of the use cases that I wanted to talk about. Um, any questions about what you've seen? All right, let me try to bring you on. Jeff, can I ask one thing, sorry? Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> sorry if I missed something near the beginning, but I'm just a little confused about how you can personalize the membership oh, form. Yeah. So, so, the mem yeah, the, so the, on a renewal or an app, uh, for the new, renewal form and for the new member application, those, what we've got, and we'll publish this and we'll make it available to all of the uh, provincial and club registrars. But basically all it is, is it's a Word document uh, that's set up to merge data in with the uh, Excel spreadsheet that got exported from the system. And, oh, maybe I don't have it. So was the idea to make this membership with CBTF and OBTA, or sorry, whatever, your province and CBTF, kind of like all part of your club membership forms so that they're not doing two things? So that becomes an option. I'll, okay. I'll put it that way. It's, okay. That's something that I think really needs to be worked out. I mean, different, it, it's going to vary province by province. Some provinces may want to insist on there being a standard provincial form, period. That was kind of what I was thinking, like losing its identity as sort of why we've been doing it. Yeah. And well, yes, it's one of the changes. And so um, some, some provinces may want to insist on a standard provincial form. Some provinces may say, no, we're fine. Uh, clubs can do their own thing. Um, but, you know, in addition to the CBTF requirements of this term, these terms and conditions and this wording on the waiver and this wording and wording, for the COVID-19 and the media release. In addition to that, we need you to also include this. Okay. Um, but it, it, do, it doesn't require, I guess I should say it this way. You're not required to have club specific forms. You could have a provincial one, mm -hmm. um, but it opens the door for having club specific ones in cases where that, in provinces where that makes sense. Or where okay, so we'll have further direction from our provinces on what the preference might be. It's a, I, th I would say, I don't know whether you'll get direction. It's probably <laughs> a conversation you want to have okay. with your province. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sh Cheryl's just asking too. So, so I think, yeah, we'll probably be asking. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, so Alan's asked if, uh, yeah. If I notice a mistake that the system didn't catch, e.g. wrong birthday, am I required to resubmit that file as soon as the mistake is figured out on my end. So, um, okay, I'll answer it this way and Alain, you'd let me know if I'm missing the point of the question. The system, so there's, there's not a lot of, oh, how do I say this? If you've, if you've submitted a person to your provincial registrar and they've managed to submit them nationally and the birth date that's on the person's record is, you know, 19, is August 20th, 1997, and it should have been August 21st. A, you should fix it. And you would just go into the uh, membership page and um, uh, correct the data. Uh, but, or and, when you do that fix, you're not required to resubmit that person in a new batch. You just fix it. So if this, you know, if I needed to correct the email address, I just, I, I just fix it. Even though this person's already been um, for 2020, their member status is complete, their provincial and national status is approved. I can change their email address or, or I mean, I, I picked email address just because I didn't want to have to do all the athlete stuff, but I could fix any of this stuff, uh, click okay. And it just, it's done. You don't need to resubmit to the batch or anything. Where, where that becomes a bit of a, um, where it gets a little bit more complicated is if you are changing their member types. 
So let's say this guy, Fred, at example, let's say this guy started as an E member and you, and you need to switch him up to a D. So in this case, that this one is one where you would make the change and you would reflect the and you would make the change. The, this particular change for right now, given that we're in the middle of the membership season, this is one that you just have to handle off system in terms of sending the extra money over. By the time we get to November and the new member cycle, the new membership cycle is over or the renewal membership cycle is over. By the time we get to November, doing that type of change will trigger then we'll trigger some changes to the member status so that he'll have to be, or he could be resubmitted in a new batch. So for right now, we've tried to keep things as simple as possible for the renewal period. And once we get to the end of the renewal period, which is November 15th or November 30th, whatever it is, um, then those types of changes that actually do affect membership status, those types of changes will trigger additional um, actions. Did that make, did that come close to answering your question? No, that was exactly it. No, thank you. Okay. Thanks. So I guess one, one other thing I guess to be said here is there are, there is more to membership than what you see here, but what we have, what we are trying to do as we roll this out is we're trying to keep it um, relevant and for the immediate and not make things too complicated by you know opening the kimono and showing everything but rolling it out for right now we need to get renewal and member ads and batches and then as as we move down the year we'll have to do uh, other things for uh, membership changes and then as we get into the next season it'll get more complicated because now there will be data on here that we probably want to filter out because they're members that have uh, quit and not returned for a while so we don't need to see them anymore. So it gets more complicated as we get further down in time. For right now, we're, as I said, we're trying to keep it simple and relevant for the here and now as we roll this out. Okay, so let me try and uh, wrap up. Yay. Okay, so we've covered all those use cases. Data requirements, we've talked about it. Um, minimum for a member is their name and their email address. Uh, they have to be in a membership season and they need to be attached to a club and a province. Little special case for the unaffiliated members. Again, to keep things simple, we've created a special club called unaffiliated for all those people who are um, not actually attached to a club. And the person that manages the unaffiliated club is the provincial registrar. So it just keeps things simple. Essentially, everyone is attached to a club. It just so happens that one of those clubs is a special one. It's the unaffiliated one. And the provincial registrar is the one that handles those. So that's the minimum data for a member. And then also, if the member has an athlete membership type, so A, B, B, R, or G, the date of birth, gender, and citizenship also become mandatory. Uh, data conversion. So we have done some data conversion. It's all as is. So um, whatever was in the old system has been brought over into the new system. Whatever misspellings existed, whatever incorrect addresses existed, whatever um, incorrect email addresses existed, maybe incorrect dates of birth, whatever was in the old system, it's just come over to the new system. So as part of this renewal cycle, I, I do encourage all of the club registrars to verify and validate and double check all of that information that's already in the system. Please don't assume that just because it's there, it's 100% correct. It's 100% match from what we used to have, but what we used to have may never have been correct. And um, so that's it on data conversion. We only, and we only converted the last, the current season. Nothing older than that. So a couple uh, gotchas on the data conversion. Um, so for 2020, we talked about this one already, the C membership type is being replaced by 
uh, the T1 and the T2. So as you, re as you membership registrars renew people, it'll carry forward their old, their 2019 membership type. So it'll bring the C forward, but then when you try to save it, it'll say, uh, -uh no, no, C is not a valid one anymore. And so you'll have to go in and, and uh, correct it to be the T1 or the T2, whichever uh, applies to that particular member. Uh, and then the other thing that just looks a little bit weird is because the old system didn't know provincial fees, when you're looking at their old 2019 registration, you'll see that their total membership fee shows as zero. And that's because the old system didn't know the provincial, any of the provincial fees. Uh, the new, for 2020 and going forward, we know the provincial fees. And so it calculates and shows those properly. Okay, so that brings us to next steps. So um, first next step is that you get to play with the new system. Uh, it is up on, it is out there on the internet right now, membership.cbtf.ca. Beth has created or is creating uh, email addresses for you, or uh, user accounts for you, pardon me. Um, so you can log in. And if you, uh, and you can use the forgot my password thing in order to uh, reset your password, reset the password on your account. Um, and so all registrars, both club and provincial, uh, should try signing in using your email address and uh, requesting the password reset yourself. You'll get a, an email from the system. Check your junk mail because some places will filter it out. If the email address hasn't been set up, so if you don't get an email from the system within five minutes or so, then contact Beth at secondvp uh, at cbtf.ca and she'll create an account for you. And she does need to know, of course, what province and what club you're from. So you've got a period of time here before we go live to play. And you can do anything you want. You can renew anyone. You can change their data. You can do whatever you want. Because what we're going to do around about September 17th is we're going to just empty this whole system out and restore it to being the right at the, at the start of we've just converted all the data. Anything you do but from now to then is just gonna get thrown away. So just remember we're in play time here. Everything you do will be thrown away. So these are not, you know, don't, please don't spend hours and hours and hours doing a whole bunch of things and submitting batches and saying, hey, I'm done because September 19th, you're gonna, is when it happens for real. Uh, Elan is asking, can there be more than one club registrar? The answer to that is yes. You do not share a username and password. No, you would each have your own username and password. Um, the only thing to be careful of if you're a club that has multiple uh, registrars is just make sure you're dividing up the work and you each know what the other is doing so you're not duplicating stuff. System won't care, but there's no need to duplicate the work. So, um, so anyway, so for right now you can play. The other thing you can do, start doing right now is prepare and that needs to happen both uh, at the provincial level and at the club level. Uh, and in particular, when I'm talking about the preparing, if a club wants to, or if the province wants to customize the uh, renewal template or the new membership template, now is the time to do it. So that when we get to the go live period on September 19th, you'll be ready to go and you can do your data export, run your mail merge and start uh, sending out your renewal uh, packages. The official go live is going to be September 19th. What that really means, though, is that the play system will go offline around about September 17th, uh, because we'll just give ourselves a couple days there to uh, empty out the database and load it up with the uh, with the proper conversion and the proper provincial fees and all that kind of stuff. So that is that is it. Questions. Stop that. Anyone have any uh, questions from all of this that we've talked about? There's a lot there and there's a lot to absorb. And so that's why I would encourage all of you to um, log on to the system, do a password reset, get on there, have a look at what uh, the data is for your club uh, and start doing and start getting into some of that uh, play time. 
Okay, well, going, going, gone. One more call for any other questions. Um, doesn't sound like there is. So look, I wanna thank everyone for your time tonight. Um, we've covered everything that I needed to cover. So I'm going to say you all get the night off tomorrow or not really, you all can use tomorrow's time to play on the system. Um, but we don't need, we won't have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, this one has been recorded. We'll uh, get this uploaded uh, to the YouTube channel uh, quickly within the next few days, probably. Uh, and then uh, if you needed to review anything from the, from this session, you could, you can, uh, and that's, and we're ready to go. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Stay safe and have fun with membership.